Hey everybody, Hunter here. I uh, recently rebuilt my website, my personal website, and I wanted to just share what I did and the steps I took to make that. So the first was the idea of the site. Um, the old site was kind of like a one-pager normal site, and then I wanted something a little more unique. So I wanted to make one of those link tree type of sites where it's just like a short bio and you can have links on it but i also wanted to combine it with the look and feel of like a TikTok or an instagram reels and this is the final product i came up with so when you land on the home page it kind of looks a little bit like a reels or an instagram or a TikTok uh, type of profile let me do a little reload here and then you can kind of just swipe up and you get like a video background and you have like a link to your project here and then instead of like the hearts and stuff on the on the right side here you get your social media profile links and things like that uh, which i thought is a little cool twist so you can have all the links in one spot and then you can show off your projects in a swipeable manner. So what I did was I started off with just HTML5 boilerplate. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of just like a very basic HTML uh, only template. And then the whole site is kind of just one, one HTML page. This is like the whole thing right here. And then I do have a package.json, but the only thing it's doing is there's a few scripts in here. It kind of runs a little browser sync to do a little watch for any changes. And it'll uh, do like a hot reload uh, in the browser for you. And then I'll watch for Tailwind changes. I'm using Tailwind CSS for the styles. And these are the only two things that it does. I can spin that up a little bit right here. So how I have it set up is you do npm run dev and then this is going to run the browser sync. So now if I want to make a change, let's say for Hunter Chang, I do hello world. Let's do a little change. You can see that it's like a hot mod because you don't get that for free when you're just building a a normal HTML site and browser sync lets you get the benefits of the, the hot module reloading. And then the other command you want to run is if you open up a new tab, uh, dev tailwind. So this is a tailwind watcher. So now when you add the tailwind styles, for example, BG black, and you change it to BG white. Tailwind is going to auto detect that and rebuild the styles for you. And then all the styles get kind of imported up here. Uh, the only styles get imported here. So in the styles, we have the input.css. This is where all the Tailwind base and things like that go into. And I have some like reuse, reusable little components that I've made. And then when it gets built, it becomes the styles.css. And the styles.css is the actual thing that gets imported into here. So that is kind of how the styling works. And then the rest of this is just like some meta tags and whatnot. So the real meat and potatoes of this project is the swiper component. Uh, so I use swiper.js. And if you go to their website, swiper.js, This is basically what I used. Um, I thought it was probably one of the most popular swiper libraries out there. And then I used their web components package and I just straight up uh, added it via the JS deliver. I think I did it down here. Yeah, so this is where I'm importing the swiper element bundle. And then above it is where you have the swiper container and stuff like that. 
So for whatever reason, I tried putting this at the top above this swiper container and it wasn't working. So just to note that the reason it's down below all this swiper stuff is because I think it needs to detect the swiper elements for the code to work properly. So once I got the swiper working, uh, I just styled each of the swiper slides with the different slide classes. And then I have a section in there that kind of gives it a full width and height to span the width of the screen. So if you do a little inspect here, you can kind of see that uh, most of the styling is just to make sure the, sw the swiper goes to the edges of this container. And I've kind of confined the container so it, even on like a, a desktop view, it's going to function and look kind of similar to what it would on mobile. And then as you shrink it down, it's going to take up, it's going to go to the edges, kind of like what TikTok and uh, Instagram Reels does. And then down here is just the description. So these icons are all just positioned absolute. Um, you can go to the, the finished site and just inspect the CSS to see all that stuff. Um, let's see what else did I do? Okay, so I hosted all the videos and the images on Cloudinary just because it helps compress them. I wanted like as small as files as I possibly can. And then the icons are all just SVG icons. I got them uh, just off the internet and they're just straight up in here just in the code as a SVG and then I do have some extra JavaScript down here and these are kind of listener events so you can listen for the events on the swiper so why I wanted to do that is when you swipe to change the change the slide I wanted to like the previous video to get paused. So if it's on this video, this video will play, but as soon as you swipe up, this video becomes paused and then this video plays. So that's one of the events that I'm listening for. And to do that, I'll just walk through the code here real quick. You'll want to get the swiper container and then you can add an event listener for a real index change and then you get event.details and under event.details there's a swiper and under swiper there is a real index so the real index is kind of like what slide am I on so if I'm on slide 0 which is the first slide then I want video 1 to play and I'll pause video 2 and I'll pause video 3 if I'm on the second slide or real index equals 1 I want the second video to play and I'll pause the other ones. Now the other thing I did was I did not want all three videos to load in at once because the default behavior is you go up to the video tags up here, Let's see if I can find them. So this is what the video tags look like. Um, I have the source here. As I mentioned before, I, I'm hosting the videos on Cloudinary so they can be as small as possible, but they're just kind of like MP4 videos. At first I had this source in all the video tags. So when you first load a page, the two slides that are off screen, the video is loaded for those, even though you're not seeing those. And I didn't really like that. So what I did was uh, the only source I've included was the source for the first video. So when you get there, the first video loads, which is fine and then for the second and third video I have the video tag here and I have a poster here so the poster is like a, it's like the image that shows in case the video does not show so in this case it's going to show just a static image uh, at first so let's go to the static image link and this is the static image it's like the first frame of the second video so in case something doesn't support the video, this is what you're going to see. You're just going to see a static background. But once it loads, you're going to see this, uh, you're going to see the video actually play as the background. And then I have an autoplay, and then you need to have the videos muted. 
if you want autoplay to work that's just kind of the way of things otherwise the browsers will not really want to autoplay um, and then i have it in the loop and then plays inline and this disable picture in picture these are what allows it to autoplay in a safari browser on ios mobile uh, otherwise it doesn't really play on a iphone so in safari so i have to add plays in line and then this disable picture in picture but the second one and the third one the video is empty so if i go back down to the javascript down here i'm looking for video one with the get element by id and then in my little event listener uh, the first one I don't really need to do much on when I switch to the second slide I'm going to look for a source so if there's a source if there's not a source I'm going to insert the source for the second video which is this so this is the source for the second video and then after I insert it I'm going to play the second video and then the video is going to play and then the same thing goes for the third video. If there's not a source three, then I'm going to insert source three. And then when you insert this video, then the actual video gets loaded. So we can kind of take a quick look at how that works. Under the network tab over here, so if I go to media and I reload the page. So the first video is this one. Uh, this is the Shanghai background video. So now if I do one of these Okay, so as I swipe, okay, see then you see the second video gets loaded And then if I swipe then the third video gets loaded and I swipe again. This other video is already loaded. This video is already loaded Then it just kind of works normally, but I didn't want all three videos to load at once and that's what this block of uh, this like if block does. And that's basically it. I mean, it was pretty simple to do. Um, the trickiest part, I think, was to figure out which of these event listeners I wanted to use. Because if you go to the Swiper Docs, they have a bunch of different ones. And it turns out the real index change is what I wanted to use because I do have like a looping. I do have a looping slideshow going on, uh, which made like the normal index not really work well. So if I go up to the swiper container, you can see I changed the direction to vertical, loop is true, and then mouse wheel is also true. So if I'm on desktop, I can use a mouse wheel to swipe through the slides. Um, yeah, that's the site. It is pretty cool. I usually change my website once every, I don't know, year or two. So next time I get an itch to change it, I probably will post another video on what I'm doing. But I think this is a pretty cool site. You can kind of click on these links to go to your other projects. Like This is one of the projects I have. And then the first link here is the most prominent link you want to show. So this goes to the blog which has recently moved to hash node um, so take a look at that if you want to and yeah that's about it thanks for watching